you're working on the baby buggy. Now the baby buggy comes in two sizes and in this video we are going to be talking about making the sides of the baby buggy and the gusset. Those are the two main pieces of the baby buggy. To make the sides, uh, they are made um, so that they are finished on both the inside and the outside so your baby buggy will look just as pretty on the inside as it does on the outside. To start with, uh, you have a template in your pattern. It has two sizes. The black line outlines the larger size and the red line outlines the smaller size. Use template plastic and draw your template onto template plastic. That way you have a more permanent uh, sample and you can use this over and over again and it's nice and stiff. So again, out, outside line is the large baby buggy and the inside lines, the red lines, they're the small baby buggy. So the next thing that you'll want to do is you will want to um, fuse fabric to a stiff double-sided fusible interfacing. You're fusing fabric to just one side. You will be making four sides. You will be making two in this direction and two in this direction. That's another good thing about the template plastic is that you can uh, use it in either direction. So the next step after you've got your uh, fabric fused to your stiff interfacing and you've cut four pieces out, again two are going to be in one direction and then two are going to be in another direction. You're going to bind each one separately. So let's move over to the ironing board, I mean the ironing board, the sewing machine, and let's do a little sewing. Fold the beginning of your binding, and this is you, you'll cut this according the, to the pattern directions. Fold it down about a half an inch. You're going to place that somewhere on the bottom of the baby buggy. With a quarter of an inch seam, and I'm using a walking foot, and I know exactly where my quarter of an inch seam is, I'm going to sew this on all the way around. Now, you're going to be working with curves, so I use a skewer. Um, normally I would use a stiletto, but for purposes of this I'm going to use a skewer because I'm going to get in tight to my needle and I don't want uh, the needle to hit something metal. So I'm using this skewer and it works just as well to hold everything in place. So you can see as I move around I'm just using my skewer to ease around some of those curves. Now I'm sewing with a quarter of an inch seam. At the corner, at this first corner, I'm going to do a typical uh, mitered binding. So I'm going to sew to one quarter inch before the edge. I'm going to lift my presser foot Fold the fabric out so that the raw edge of the fabric runs in a straight line. Then I'm going to fold this down and then I'm going to start stitching right at the beginning with my quarter inch seam again. Now I'm going to put my needle down on my sewing machine because the next corner is an inside corner and we need to pivot with the needle down when we get there. So I'm approaching the corner. Now I am going to pivot at the, and I'm going to lift my presser foot a little bit so you can see this. I'm going to pivot at the intersection between this quarter inch seam and this quarter inch seam. Now I'm just eyeballing it. So I'm going to go to that corner and I'm going to stop with the needle down lift my presser foot. I'm going to turn the fabric just a little bit and this is where I'm getting in close 
uh, with the, my little skewer to keep the fabric out of the way so it won't get wrinkled. So I'm going to take one stitch. I'm going to lift the presser foot. I'm going to turn a little bit more. And my goal is to have this raw edge of the fabric match this raw edge of the side. So I'm going to turn just one more. And now at this point, I think I can turn it all the way. And again, I'm going to just make sure that the fabric isn't folded over in there. Now I can just continue on to the next corner. The next corner is a typical miter. So I'm going to sew to with one quarter inch, raise my presser foot, fold it out so that the raw edge is parallel to the next line to be sewn, and then I'm going to fold it back down. Now this front edge is a little curved, so I want to make sure that I am creating a right angle with my binding. That down. And again, just keep using my my little skewer or my stiletto to keep going around and around and around. We're almost done with the binding. Okay, so I'm here. I'm almost at the end. I'm going to eyeball and I'm going to cut this binding about half an inch um, so that it's overlapping the beginning about a half an inch. So I'm going to sew all the way through. Lift my foot. Clip off all these threads here. And now we're moving back to the ironing area. Now one of the things I forgot to tell you is that you should have parchment paper on your ironing table because um, we're working with double-sided fusible so if you don't have parchment on your ironing board make sure you cover your ironing board with parchment. We are flipping the binding to the back. Now this is just one layer of binding. It's nice and thin so it doesn't add a whole lot of bulk. And what we're going to do is we are going to flip this to the back and then we're going to take our iron. Now I'm using an iron, just this little uh, steam fast travel iron. It's great because it has um, a Teflon sole plate and uh, the fusible doesn't tend to stick to it. So you're going to just sew all the way around, I mean iron all the way around. You're going to miter your corner like that. And then hold this nice and tight as you go around that corner. And then just keep going all the way around. And miter the next corner. And around, and around, and around, and around, and around. And then you're going to hold it down right at the end a little bit. So once you've got your um, piece all fused, then I just go to the front side and just iron it so that the binding is nice and flat from the front side too. So that's how you bind each side. Now remember, you're going to have to make four of these, two for each side. So I've already finished the other side. Now you're going to place these two together. I like to use clover clips to clip them together because they're easy to sew with. So just clip all the way around with clover clips. Then the next step is you want to sew all the way around just a little bit of ways from your binding. So you're sewing in the ditch but just a little bit beyond the ditch. You want to use uh, thread that coordinates with your side fabric. Before you finish the sides, the next thing to do is to give the sides um, a little added interest. You are going to be sewing 
a, these little lines in the cover part of your baby buggy, and that's to mimic the folds that you normally have in a baby buggy. So I'm going to pull the template out again. That's what these dotted lines are for. So you can either trace those dotted lines on your template plastic and then come over here and use your template plastic to draw a little tick mark right here. All of the lines are going to converge right in that corner. So um, draw those lines on and I use a Frigion pen, you can see that line right there. Um, that will um, iron away uh, once, once you um, iron it. So just uh, stitch those little lines and that's just decorative stitching. And you're finished with your sides. The next piece that you will want to make is your gusset. Now your gusset is a little bit longer and by the way these two pieces right here are for the large baby buggy. So with the gusset again it's going to be double sided a little bit easier because there are no curves on your on your gusset but you're going to make them the same way. You're going to fuse fabric to one side cut them according to the pattern directions bind them the same way you did your sides put two of them together and stitch all the way around the outside. You're also going to do your stitching across the back. Now these stitching lines across the back of your gusset should line up with your stitching lines along the side. Now you can draw them in, uh, you can just place your gusset up next to the side and draw them in or you can use um, the guide on the template to draw them in. So you want to stitch right across here. It's just four stitches all the way across and you're done with your gusset.